Hi everybody, welcome back to another video in our medication series and today we're talking about rapid acting insulin. Now this is part of our medication series and like all our videos in this series, this is not advice about whether or not to take these medications, it's just information to show you how they work so you have more information about managing your diabetes. So now we're done with the introductions, let's take a look at how rapid acting insulins work. What are rapid acting insulins? Rapid acting insulins are a type of diabetes medication and insulin that you take with food to stop blood glucose levels rising. Now it's only particular foods that will increase your blood glucose levels and these are called carbohydrates. Now there's plenty of information on the blog all about carbohydrates, but as a very quick snapshot, these foods are starchy foods like bread, rice, pasta, cereal, porridge oats, and also sugary foods like processed sugar, cakes, biscuits, chocolates, and to a certain extent, also natural sugars that you find in fruits and a little bit in milk and yogurt. So there's a few different food groups where you find these, starch, uh, these carbohydrate containing foods. Now, if you're having these in a big enough quantity, it means your blood glucose levels have potential to increase because your pancreas is either able to release no extra insulin like you see in type 1 diabetes to counteract the rise in your blood glucose levels, or not enough insulin that you might see in type 2 diabetes to counteract the same rise in your blood glucose levels. Therefore, we need to supplement your body with additional insulin to stop your glucose levels going too high. So typically speaking, rapid acting insulins will be taken with meals or when you have any significant amount of carbohydrate throughout the day. So just looking at what I've drawn out here, we can see that it's usually taken as part of something called a basal bolus regimen. So it's used alongside your basal or long acting insulin, which is another video for long acting insulin that we've done on this blog. So you have your long acting insulin ticking along in the background. This one's looking after your liver. It's stopping your liver kicking out too much glucose so your glucose levels aren't rising all day as a baseline level. Then, as you eat your meal, say breakfast, lunch, dinner, assuming you're having a significant amount of carbohydrate at these meals, then you need to take your rapid acting insulin. Now, rapid acting insulin lasts about four and a half hours, which is why it's called rapid acting, because it's in and it's out. It takes about 30 minutes before it enters your circulation. So as gold standard, you'll be advised to take this 30 minutes before your meal. However, this isn't always the most practical advice. So just taking it at the start of the meal usually works quite well. The insulin will then reach its peak at around an hour after injection. And then after about four and a half hours, it's out of your system. How much rapid insulin do I take? As with all insulins, you'll take what you need, so everyone's requirement will be different. However, with rapid acting insulins, we can get a little bit more methodical. So many patients, particularly those with type one diabetes, will follow a regimen called carbohydrate counting. So all carbohydrate counting is, is a strategy to enable you to adjust your rapid acting insulin based on the carbohydrates that you're eating. So as a basic principle, you might take so many units of rapid acting insulin for so many grams of carbohydrates eaten. So for example, you'll take one unit for every 10 grams of carbohydrate taken. So if you had 50 grams of carbohydrate at your meal, you've had five sets of 10, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and therefore you would take five units because it's one for 10 at that meal. Now your diabetes team will teach you how to count up your carbohydrates or check out the type 1 section on our blog to understand how you do carbohydrate counting. This would allow you to adjust your insulin based on what you're eating. This is because you'll have different amounts of carbohydrates based on your meal. For example, if you had a fish and chips, which is very carbohydrate heavy, you may need to take more insulin compared to if you had just two slices of toast, which isn't going to give you nearly as much carbohydrates, so you'd need to take less. Now, typically when you're newly diagnosed, you'll be given a set dose. So you might take, for example, five units three times a day, and you'll find that you'll get variable glucose levels. Then as time passes, you'll gain access to more education and more healthcare input, and you'll start to learn these strategies about how to adjust your rapid acting insulin. Correction doses.
The other thing you can use rapid acting insulin for is to help correct high glucose levels. Obviously, if you're experiencing high glucose levels throughout the day, you don't want to stay there for the remainder of that day and into the next few days. So what you can do is add additional insulin on top of your food insulin to help lower high glucose levels back into target. Again, this is something your healthcare team can talk you through or check out the type one section again on this website at diabetesdietguide.com for more information information about correction doses. How do I know if my dose is correct? One thing you're going to want to know with your insulin is whether or not your dose is correct. Now with rapid acting insulin, it's quite simple to figure this out. Because if you are establishing a pattern where your glucose levels rise between meals, time after time, you know that if you're using a carbohydrate counting ratio, or if you're just giving a set dose, then that ratio or set dose is off. Now we never want to react off just one sample. So if you just find it happens one day, then that doesn't mean that you should increase. You should establish a pattern first and increase after you've seen a couple or three even um, back to back days where you're seeing this pattern emerge and vice versa. If the glucose levels are dropping, then you can take some insulin off and hopefully eventually you'll find that sweet spot where you find either your ratio or the set dose that works for you. Particularly at breakfast and lunch where we tend to be more creatures of habit and you may eat more similar meals. Typically speaking, dinner tends to be the one that we vary a lot more and therefore you might need to adjust your dose based on what you're eating a lot more at this meal. Benefits of rapid acting insulin. One of the key benefits with rapid acting insulin is that it's very flexible. Because it's in and out of your system after four and a half hours, it means that you can actually adjust your doses and correct high glucose levels several times a day in order to keep your glucose levels where you want them. Whereas other insulin preparations that might last 12 hours or even 24 hours like a long acting, it doesn't give you as much flexibility to adjust it as regularly as you can with the rapid acting insulins. Another beauty of the rapid acting insulins is if you don't eat carbohydrate containing foods or you don't need to add in a correction dose or perhaps you just don't eat a meal, then you don't need to take it. So although it looks like you need to take it three times a day, actually some people might only eat two times a day and therefore you need to take it less or you might be more little and often with your meals and therefore you can adjust and take more rapid acting insulin doses as you need to. So it's a very flexible insulin. Negatives of rapid acting insulin. One of the major drawbacks with rapid acting insulin for some people is how often you need to take it, particularly for someone that eats three square meals or you're more little and often throughout the day, it can mean quite a few injections. Also, we never recommend taking insulin blindly, so you'll need to be testing your glucose levels quite frequently. Particularly if you're taking an insulin dose, then we suggest that you take it every four and a half hours, test your blood glucose levels that is, every four and a half hours to assess how that dose has turned out. Because you don't know then if you need to add a correction dose onto your next dose, or if you've given too much and you may have fallen into a low blood glucose level. So yes, it can be quite intensive in terms of the testing, the carbohydrate counting the correction doses it can add up to quite a lot of work throughout each day but over time you'll start to become more of an expert and hopefully it will become second nature after a few months finally one of the other negatives of a rapid acting insulin like all insulins is the risk of hypoglycemia so low blood glucose levels and this is where the testing of your glucose levels is very important particularly if you're feeling a bit off a bit shaky a bit spaced out sweaty um, quite hungry or any of the other symptoms of hypoglycemia. Advanced techniques. In recent times, people have had more technology to assess how their blood glucose levels are doing between meals. And this is data that we wouldn't have previously had when people were just finger pricking because typically we only have finger pricks at certain time points throughout the day. Whereas now we can get a full 24 hour snapshot of what's happening. And one thing that happens with many of my patients is they notice high glucose levels between meals, despite the fact that glucose returns to their pre-meal level and remains in target at these time points, but they see that spike in between. 
between. Now usually this means a couple of things. It might be the type of carbohydrate that they're eating is too quick releasing for their insulin to keep up, which means you either need to change the type of carbohydrate or move the insulin to an earlier injection to allow it to get into your system before the carbohydrate gets in and spikes the glucose. So there's many different advanced techniques that we can start to look at in terms of how your food is absorbed, the timing of the insulin and how that all ties together. If you do have a freestyle Libra like a flash glucose monitor or a continuous glucose monitor like the Dexcom and you're finding that you're getting spikes around meal times or after meal times and you can't quite work out what to do, then check out our programs on the website at diabetesdietguide.com or speak with your healthcare team or your diabetes team to see if they can offer any further insight. And that's it everybody for rapid acting insulins. I hope you found the video useful. Remember, it, there's plenty more information on the website at diabetesdietguide.com if you're not watching on the website already. Or if you need an extra helping hand, check out our consultancy or our programs pages to see how we can help you further. We'll leave it there and we'll see you at the next video.